Welcome back. Lone Survivor is tipped to be the best war movie since Saving Private Ryan. Because to be cool, and is Saving Private Ryan one of the best war films of all time anyway? I don't know. What about The Hurt Locker? Ah, oh, that's a big question there. Based on the true story of the secret 2005 US operation to capture a Taliban leader in the mountains of Afghanistan. Our movie man Jason Javadomas is here to give us his take. Morning to you, James. Morning, guys. I mean, Marky Mark. Uh, he's always great, isn't he, Mark Wahlberg? Um, he, I think he's got a real hit and miss <coughs> kind of career, to be honest. He's obviously really? the inspiration for the TV show Entourage, and he, he shined in Pain and Gain most recently, but he has had the odd dud movie. This one comes to us from actor-turned-director Peter Berg, who dished out war movies previously in 2012's Battleship, starring oh. Rihanna, yeah, yeah, and 2007's The Kingdom, starring Jamie Foxx, which... You know, it was, was a moderately successful film. It did well at the box office. Um, he handles the uh, action on the big screen pretty competently here. Um, but there's little else beyond bullets, bravery and a band of brothers. Not to confuse this with the HBO series that screened in 2001, right. band, of band of Brothers, which starred Donnie Wahlberg, Mark's brother. So Mark's... So Sorry, carry on. Uh, Mark, Mark steps into the uh, the lead role here as the lone survivor, title giving away the entire film, basically. <laughs> uh, sniper Marcus Luttrell, they come under heavy fire, outnumbered, outgunned, a rescue mission, uh, you know, ha happens, uh, courtesy of Eric Banner, who's back at base. But for me, the film didn't really go too many places. So who's calling it the best war film since Saving Private Ryan, the director? I don't want to get into political territory here. It's oh, okay. a very jingoistic, gun ho um, American military recruiting film as sure. opposed oh, okay. to anti-war yeah. films, yeah, gotcha. yeah. which okay. I think is something that us Australians are, are more partial to, like a bit of a message that, you know, yeah. war's not so yeah. good. Yeah. This Three feels kings. like it's a justification of, of a conflict that has no winners. So let's take a quick look at Lone Survivor. Can he say it? Can you say it? Mr. Patton, please. Come on. Been around the world twice. Talk to everyone once. There ain't nothing I can't do. No sky too high, no sea too rough. Learned a lot of lessons in my life. Never shoot a large caliber man with a small caliber bullet. Anything in life worth doing is worth overdoing. Moderations for cowards. I'm a lover. I'm a fighter. I'm a UDT Navy SEAL diver. Mm. UDT, not confused with uh, UDL, you know, premix drinks, but UDT, sure. underwater demolition team. So, you know, I absolutely salute uh, certainly Australia's uh, defence forces. Very grateful for the role they do in protecting uh, our country. This movie is much more about focusing on Navy SEALs and the job they do for uh, for Americans, you know, the American government and the American military. Very dangerous job. But it's not a very job. complex look at the nature of not war really. and no, what it does to It's people. just a mission that goes wrong and, yeah, and the guy okay. survives. So All three right. stars three for stars. that one. Um, something that's garnering a lot of attention going into the Academy Awards, six nominations for our second movie this week, Nebraska it's called, and it comes from the guy that gave us The Descendants, Alexander Payne, and also Sideways, which was a great film about oh, visiting yeah, the Napa both Valley. both of those films are fantastic. Yeah, quite funny. Bruce Dern is here as uh, Woody Grant. He's an old man with not too much to live for, except one day he receives a piece of mail. Congratulations, you've won a million dollars. Uh, of course, we've yes. all received those pieces. I want 900,000 euro, and all I've got to do is call the Schlumberger Hoff. <laughs> <laughs> well, Paul Woody takes it upon himself to walk to uh, Nebraska, to Lincoln, Nebraska, from his home of Billings, Montana, to collect his million dollar prize. Oh, On the way, oh. uh, he gets picked up by the police, returned home. His family, his son, decides to indulge his fantasy. Um, and take him along uh, on the trip to collect his winnings and they get to know each other. So let's take a quick look at Nebraska. That's Ed Pegram singing. Did you know that he was always trying to get in my bloomers? Jesus, Mom, was the whole town trying to seduce you? These boys grow up staring at the rear ends of cows and pigs. It's only natural that a real woman will get them chafing their pants. Mom. Now she's married to a would-be millionaire. I never knew the son of a even wanted to be a millionaire. Should have thought about that years ago and worked for it. Yeah, great, great <laughs> film about long-term marriage and uh, the decisions we make in life. Four stars for Nebraska. All the best for it at the Academy Awards. Good did you say stuff. six nominations? Yeah, June Squibb, the uh, the lady there, uh, one of the nominations. So, wow. yeah, good luck, Nebraska. Go check that out. How a good terrific. review. Thanks, thanks, thanks guys. Cheers. very much. Go and ring Schlumberger Hoff. <laughs> all right? Yeah, actually, now that I think of it, it was called the Schlumberger Gloss, but with that funny double S that the Germans use, it looks like a B. Oh, yeah. So it was yeah. Schlumberger Glob. Okay, we'll go and call the Schlimburger Glob. The Schlimburger glob. Yeah. Let us know how you go. Yeah, we'll. Stay with us. We've got more of Weekend Sunrise right after the break. Yeah, we got you can find out how you go. We got